Friends, in the court of law, we often hear this line that justice delayed is justice denied. But in the world of data, I often say that data delayed is profit denied. Because if you're not getting the right data at the right time, you're not able to derive useful business insights, which will eventually turn into profits. And that is what we will discuss today that for getting any data from raw data to actual insights, you need a data pipeline. If you have not watched, you, you can watch my data pipeline video. Oh, we have gone into the details uh, of data pipeline. But in this video, we will be primarily focusing on serverless data pipeline and its architecture because the word serverless means you don't need to do anything. Everything is ready. The infrastructure is ready. The services are ready. You just need to plug and play and your data pipeline will start uh, running. And that is what is uh, required because you need the pipelines to be deployed quickly so that the data starts flowing uh, and you know we are getting we start to get good insights from that data so in this video we'll talk about the logical data pipeline architecture uh, this architecture is common across any platform like whenever you are deploying a data pipeline you need this kind of an architecture uh, you can mix and match you can make changes but this is a kind of a reference architecture we'll talk about then we'll talk about a serverless cloud native architecture how it will look with actual services and we'll take aws for for that reference uh, so that will help us understand exactly how what tools and what services we will use to uh, deploy this into reality on AWS. And the most important part is we'll talk about different data or cloud specific carrier roles, uh, which sits across this whole uh, platform. So this is going to be very interesting because we'll try to see uh, who does what in this whole paradigm. If you are aspiring for a certain career, what you need to learn. So yeah, let's get started. So any logical data pipeline architecture will have primarily these six areas. So everything starts from your different kinds of data sources, which you obviously want to store into a data lake, for example. So for that, you will have streaming data, batch data, structured, unstructured data. So the first thing which happens is you come to the ingestion part. So ingestion is taking the data as a funnel, take everything coming from the source and then storing it into your storage layer. And in within your storage layer, you have different zones created. So the first zone or area where you will store the data as, as it is. So it is called as a staging area also is your raw zone. You will not make any changes, any modifications to the data coming. You will simply Simply start storing it next uh, layer comes is the processing layer so within the processing layer you start uh, you know making changes through the data so within that you could have your other logical uh, areas wherein in the first area within processing you will have the validation and cleaning and standardization of the data so for example if you are having duplicates coming into the data you will remove those duplicates you will apply certain standards to the data based on your requirement so all those kind of things basic fine-tuning uh, of the data happens uh, within the processing within this particular area and then that particular data moves to the cleaned area so you have now cleaned basically sanitized so when our mothers or our grandmothers used to clean the rice before cooking right so that kind of basic cleaning happens and then it gets stored into the cleaned area after that actual curation happens uh, so the clean data goes into the phase where we transform and enrich the data so it's when now you are cooking the rice with the, you know putting lentils in it or putting vegetables if you want to make uh, biryani or some some other dish then you are now enriching it with different um, flavors different uh, recipes uh, so that's what happens in transform and, and enrich and then your cooked recipe of rice gets stored into your curated zone so this is ready to be served so this data has come through this whole channel and now it is ready to go for consumption so here you are sitting on your table waiting for the plate of biryani to come on and you have it so that is where where you have your consumption layer so consumption layer takes the data from curated and then eventually it will be displayed or used into various uh, use cases we'll talk about it when we'll go to the actual architecture on aws where we'll talk about specific tools as well and then there are supporting layers uh, which are catalog and search what is catalog and search it is about metadata management so in this whole world of data which you are processing what is where so it is kind of a library where you go and you 
search for specific books where to locate certain kind of data all kind all those kind of facility is provided under catalog and search and then eventually everything which you are doing has to be governed because data governance is a very important aspect of this and secured so that's why you have security and governance layer sitting across this whole architecture so yeah this is the logical architecture now we will take this whole architecture and try to replicate it on aws using cloud native services of aws so that we don't have to physically deploy anything in a normal setup you might have to install a database or you might have to do some setups but in serverless cloud native everything is ready to go so let's use this as a reference model and try to project it on aws and eventually we'll come and understand across this whole layer which particular cloud or data role sits and works at which particular area primarily so yeah let's go so here it is a data pipeline architecture or data analytics architecture or using serverless services of aws so on the left we have different kinds of data you have sas and partner data which generally comes uh, through apis and files so for that you have uh, aws services like appflow and sftp which is secure file transfer protocol then you have streaming data for streaming data we have kinesis and kinesis firehose uh, there are different services of kinesis but kinesis firehose is a fully managed service which you can directly deploy and start uh, injecting uh, your streaming data into the data lake your batch data your operational data will continue to come using data migration service which is aws dms so these are some services so this is our ingestion layer okay this is our data source this is our ingestion everything coming from here will directly go to our s3 bucket and this s3 bucket will be a raw uh, category or a raw zone which we talked in our logical architecture so within this uh, s3 bucket everything will get stored in a raw format after that we will use glue workflows so aws glue is a etl service and this service will make sure that we do all the etl uh, processes like validation and cleaning in order to move the data to clean stage now in the clean stage again the data is still in s3 so understand that here s3 is your data lake storage s3 is acting as your data lake environment where you're storing all kinds of data so once it is cleaned again there would be another workflow where uh, you know you will uh, apply transformation enrichment to the data and then you will move it into the curated zone which is ready for consumption on top we have aws lake formation which is uh, which provides data cataloging and metadata services so again a fully managed service uh, but once the data is curated there are different options i have tried to kept it minimal and simple because if you talk about aws there are so many services that you'll get lost so you have to understand that we are talking about the design and architecture of data pipeline we are not here to discuss about all the tools and products and by the way if you're new to aws you want to start your career as a beginner you want to start learning aws as a scratch then do check the link in the description and in the pinned comment uh, where you could explore uh, aws for complete uh, beginner course which we offer so just have a look so coming now to the consumption layer in the consumption layer we have uh, athena which is interactive query service for s3 so any s3 bucket you could directly connect with athena and start uh, analyzing the data start querying the data a very good serverless service then we have redshift which is a very famous uh, offering from aws it is for your data warehousing workloads so once you have everything in this data lake environments you might have specific requirements which could be dealt by building your own data marts or your own data warehouses so after building this data lake you can have your data warehouses or your data marts uh, stored on redshift and then you have SageMaker, which is the platform offered by AWS for deploying all kinds of different machine learning and AI models. So if you want to go into data science uh, domain, then SageMaker would be your next step. Across this whole uh, paradigm, you will have your security and governance running parallelly. So you will have your VPC, which is virtual private cloud. Again, if you don't know about it, do check the link in the description we have talked about all the core services of aws in the course so you can uh, you know you can understand it all uh, key management services for encrypting your data all kind of key management will happen using kms kms cloud trail will again uh, do the logging part uh, of of this whole architecture like where like it will uh, create a log trail for all the kind of activities you do on the cloud 
uh, and that includes this whole uh, architecture as well cloudwatch is simply a monitoring service offered by aws so cloudwatch if you configure cloudwatch it will continuously monitor this whole platform in case of any failures in case of any etl failures everything will be uh, can be monitored using cloudwatch lake formation again appears here because lake formation also helps you with data governance so here it is helping in cataloging but as additional bonus you can say lake formation also yeah. helps you with uh, governance activities for data governance you yeah. have to uh, make sure that whoever is asking for data is legitimate there are proper process and controls uh, and that what lake formation would offer to you now we could have used so many different tools for example i could have said we can use tabli here for example or we can use power bi okay there are so many options guys but the idea was to keep it everything on aws keep it completely cloud native serverless and fully managed and that's why we have used this but there is no uh, end to your imagination you could create diff completely different uh, thing on azure aws you can use hybrid cloud so all everything is possible the idea is the whole design does not change this the building blocks all these different layers which we talked about will not change so now let's talk about some cloud and data specific roles and where uh, these roles will focus now everyone today has to do the job almost everywhere okay but what is the majority work which you have to do so number one let's start with a data engineer so data engineer is mostly around this area so for data engineer maybe i'll i'll uh, use de okay de as acronym okay so that you understand so data engineer would be all about you know creating those data pipelines so right at the ingestion layer it will be there mostly here okay here also de will be present because everything uh, on, on the processing side creating these etl workflows everything has to be done by uh, data engineer and a bit a, a bit on the security side as well data engineer needs to know a bit about it but not the primary thing not the primary thing uh, they might also have a bit uh, of presence here and here as well okay but i'm just focusing on the major part so majorly it will be around processing ingestion processing storing all those kind of activities will be done by the data engineer now coming to the data analyst and data scientist these two roles would primarily be here da and ds data scientist okay these people will always be there understanding the catalog okay what kind of data we have and here if you see in the processing they will be mostly focused around this area data analyst and data scientist will be mostly around the curated they will play between this area okay and the maximum part they will spend here on the consumption on building the AI, AI ML models, on building, on, on analyzing the data, how it can be used to draw insights. Data engineer will be present here as well. Uh, sorry, I, I just thought, but, but yeah, there will be work majorly here, but let's put data engineer here as well on the consumption layer because data engineer has to make sure that whatever is uh, getting, you know, used uh, is in right format and maybe there will be some work needs to be done here as well. Not uh, on the SageMaker side, it is completely uh, the area for data scientists, but maybe a bit work on the Redshift and Athena side. Coming on the data architect. Now data architect's role is to define this whole design, this whole architecture. So the data architect architect would be somewhere you know sitting across this and that's why it's a senior role okay data architect would be sitting somewhere across this and especially also uh, cloud architect cloud architect will also be sitting across this but the idea is data architect would primarily be focusing on the data designing aspect so how your storage will work how what kind of partitioning you will do on s3 what kind of standards you will use while defining or designing the schemas and uh, all those kind of things how the cataloging will work what kind of consumption layer you would want to see all those kind of decisions design decisions uh, you know will be taken by the data architect they will also be uh, creating certain data models if required for consumption of data. Whereas cloud architect might not be focused too much on the data side of it, but the cloud architect role would be to make sure that the infrastructure is ready. The cloud overall cloud design is ready. For example, if there is no VPC, how you will deploy, um, you know, any resources or for example, if you do not have KMS deployed, how you will encrypt the data. So cloud architect role 
uh, will be you know will be end to end but not primarily on the data side but making sure that the backbone of this whole design is ready especially on the infrastructure side the cloud architect might also have to calculate what kind of cost or billing might be incurred if we have to deploy this on aws so all those kind of design decisions and generally the, these two work together so uh, you know they'll be mutually working together on this and then you will also have security engineer uh, security architect okay and engineer as well but i'll just keep uh, for simplicity simplicity sake security architect who would be working primarily on this layer the security aspect cyber security data security compliances audits all those kind of things will be there with the security architect so don't think that if you are not from a data industry you cannot uh, you know you cannot enter cloud because there's a place for everyone guys uh, so yeah these are some uh, roles and then overall one role which is non-technical because generally I always try to make videos for non-technical people as well so one role which I find very interesting on this uh, in this whole paradigm is of a data manager now data manager or data owner data manager or data owner would be someone who would be managing the whole data project okay uh, data owner could be the owner of certain subsets of data within this whole paradigm and data manager would be someone who would be uh, you know who would be executing data related projects and who would be leading a set of people set of individuals or a full fledged team who is doing this job on the ground so data manager but they should have they should possess good understanding of how data works and uh, how the domain works so for example if you're doing this for retail the data manager should have the understanding of how the retail industry works and why if you are uh, swiping your credit card here uh, how it will flow the how the information will flow till uh, redshift that high level understanding not technical understanding, but high level understanding they should have and that will make them a fabulous uh, data manager so anybody coming from a management background can target this role last but not the least i would say there would be like for for managing this whole thing you will have eventually you will have data ops so you will have a data ops manager or a data ops team who would be managing eventually when it will be productionized there would be people who would be managing these pipelines in support and then the, that is where data ops will come into picture so this is my understanding obviously there will be you know there will be differences of opinions as to where uh, a particular role sits in this whole setup but for my from my understanding and knowledge i find these roles uh, to be quite quite relevant in this whole setup so i hope this was a useful session uh, guys uh, if you liked it please give us a like uh, hit the subscribe and the bell icon and if you don't know about data pipeline uh, I'll, I'll link the video where we discuss data pipeline with a very very basic examples and it has cleared uh, the fundamental understanding of data pipeline for so many of our subscribers so do check out that video and just in case you want to start your journey in aws the link is in the description and the pinned comment so until next time keep learning keep sharing all your knowledge and yes keep hustling bye for now